wow, this has turned into an Ariana versus Rihanna conversation. Yeah, really quickly, yeah. But then again, you can't spell Rihanna without some Ariana. Whoa. Right? <laughs> Whoa, yeah. I think that's why she's trying to do the thing. Yeah. Welcome to another episode of The Beauty Breakdown, where we break down ideologies, misconceptions, and hot topics surrounding beauty. I'm Glamzilla, and today is all about the hustle, people. My guest for today is the one, the only, Nadal. She's a content creator who is a star on the rise, and she's making her mark in the beauty space by creating engaging, thought-provoking, and viral content. Today, we're breaking down how to become a beauty influencer. You're not gonna wanna miss this one. So what is the tea? Hey, I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for having me, I'm so excited. I had to have you here because the growth has been unreal. Oh my God. The come up has been intense. I get the hustle, yeah. I respect it. <laughs> and like, it's been insane. I know you just started co creating content yeah. in December, like literally how many months ago? Eight months ago? Yeah. And now we have over 500,000 followers. Yeah. How has that been for you? so overwhelming right? like especially in the beginning um my first ever video that has ever gotten one million likes like i never thought that could happen one million people what yeah that's insane it's crazy like if you put one million people in a room it, they couldn't even that's how i thought about it yeah yeah it's crazy um so then i just kept posting from there and so many people liked what i was doing and i was helping so many people so many young girls that looked like me um in the beauty industry and it was just like so great just getting dms and comments being like you have inspired me because I feel more comfortable in my skin tone because of what you're doing and what you're saying. So uh, it's just great. And you know what? It's it's not even about people who look like you. Mm -hmm. It's about people who don't look like you too. Yeah. And creating space for the people in between. Yes. And I think that's the beauty of the beauty journey yeah. and sharing your experience and being you. Yes. Right? Yeah. And you know what? When, when I think about all those times when I had a thousand mm -hmm. likes or 20 likes yeah if i put 20 people in a room that's enough for me to feel like enough yes like yeah. if 20 people thought liked what i was doing or thought i was pretty or thought i was funny yeah. or just related to me mm -hmm. that is it because the reality of it is if one person yeah. did all of it's worth it yeah isn't that magical that's just great yeah that's how i love to think about it just putting everyone in one room just thinking how much of an impact it makes because rooms are quite small so it's just like yeah. fills up quick when you're thinking just 20 people in one room that's a lot but you know what's crazy you and me and and her and him doing it yeah. creates room yes so you've been following the beauty community for a while yes who are your favorite content creators um nima tang jackie oh. Ina. Queens. Oh yeah, uh, I love those girls. Obviously, you. Oh my God. Michaela. Love her. Um, Dominique. Yeah, um, she was like one of the first I've ever watched. Um, Manny. Oh, love. I love Manny. Patrick. Oh Patrick. my God. <laughs> yeah. We have um, him on the show too. Yeah, I've heard. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, so for me, who I loved, I love Juicy Star Zero Seven. Yeah. Um, L and Blair Fowler. <laughs> <laughs> they were like girls who just bought a bunch of things and did hauls. Right. And I, I was a person who was just somebody who wanted things. Yeah. I wanted things because I never had things. And it didn't have to be anything, but it just had to be shiny, beautiful. Yeah. Just things. Yeah. I loved um, Michelle Phan mm -hmm. because she made me feel like being Asian was cool. Yeah. And being me was cool. Yes. I love that. Mm -hmm. Patrick Starr made me feel like being me was enough. Mm-hmm and what you bring to the table is enough. 100%. Like, think about how you related to those content creators mm -hmm. and how important that was for your own growth and, and developing your own beauty journey, right? right? Yeah, yeah, because I know with Nima Tang, just seeing another dark skin <sighs> beauty influencer, she was like the first, like one of the first, like we're both South Sudanese. Yeah. So I would always wait for her to drop a video because I was so intrigued and so interested. She had so much to say and like so many good things to say and just so many, great like she's just really encouraging and just like it's it was really good seeing that and like, seeing somebody who looked like you right exactly 
Yeah. That is so powerful. Yeah. Like the importance of being able to relate to somebody else's content. Yeah. And to, to know that you're not alone mm-hmm. and you also belong in the beauty space. Exactly. And yeah. look at you now. I you're know. killing it. Look at uh, look at look us. At who would have thought? Who would have thought? Not me. Not me. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next topic. Um, I want to dive back into when you were a kid. Mm-hmm. What was your relationship with beauty growing up? Because for me, I was a chubby Asian girl, um, and that was it. Yeah. And I and I still am. <laughs> you're right? beautiful. And I love yeah, it. yeah. You're beautiful. Um, I never said I was ugly, <laughs> girl. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. You got me there. Okay. Um, how was how was it growing up? What was your beauty journey like from the start? Um, I would say that I didn't have much of an option. Like my go-to beauty products would just be mascara or eyeliner, not really like oh, a full like a base. Oh, like girl aesthetic? Right, yeah, exactly. Um, I wanted more, obviously, but when you're, it was like, I'm, I'm starting off at like six years old and still when I first started actually wearing makeup in like middle school, I still wouldn't branch out to more products because nothing was being made to cater my skin tone. Yes. So I couldn't do yes, anything about yes, that. Yes. Um, That's so, how I feel about cloaks. Yeah, yeah. So I would just start off with like the basics, like just, like brows, mascara, mm-hmm. just lashes, and just like lip gloss. Nothing really much. Um, I it was like I'm not quite sure when Fenty came out. I was it like 2016, 2015, up. 2015, 2016. That like Fenty when they first came out. Um, I tried out their foundation and. When I tell you, my reaction trying out a foundation that melted into my skin tone, matched so perfectly, was like the best thing on earth. And it was just like me shopping, using Fenty all the time. And then where Beauty came out with their tinted moisturizer. And that's like my go-to product now because it matches so well and it's like catered to me. So So let's talk about Beauty (laughs) and shade ranges. Yeah. So as you know, Fenty Beauty and Rare Beauty have been like the movers and shakers in Beauty. Yeah. How do you feel about the brand? They are, I'm like their number one supporters, 100%. Um, they're all I use, like Rare Beauty, Fenty. Um, obviously, I would love to try out other brands. Mm-hmm. Um, I did a video on Hourglass and their mm-hmm. foundation that was supposedly the darkest shade. It was not. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was really tough because I know a lot of people hype up these products and I just want, I want to experience like just liking a product. Um, just liking a product. Yeah, and I can't really do that when it's not going to work for me. Yeah. So, you know, um, as much as I love Fenty and I love, I love Rare Beauty. They're my favorite brands right now. Um, I feel like we forget that they weren't the first to do it. Yeah. But they were the first to market it. Yeah. For example, I feel like Estee Lauder Mm -hmm. and Mac, they were doing the damn 40 shades makeup forever was, was doing the 40 shades, 50 shades, whatever it was, but they didn't market it. Right. Yeah. They, They didn't, I guess they didn't foresee yeah. that, like, that rush that Fenty did. Yeah. Like, to change the game like that mm-hmm. and create a new standard in beauty, that's all we could ask for. I know, yeah. We are currently living in the new generation of beauty, and you are at the forefront of it. Mm-hmm. Right? How yeah. amazing is that? It's so great. Like, I can't even, like, explain just, like, the feeling I got, like, knowing... There are very few dark skin influencers and just like know that I'm one of the few that can influence a group. Just like, it's so great. So let's talk about the dollar dollar bill. Okay. Okay. And the come up to become a content creator yeah. and the hustle that goes through it. Mm-hmm. Cause I've went through it. You're going through it. Yeah. You've been through it. Mm-hmm. I want to know how it was like, and the contrast, because I feel like a lot of people think, okay, she's got a paid post. That's it for her. Yeah. She's already, she's pro, she's sponsored and now she's, she's lying or she's yeah. sponsored and she's got the Gucci bag now. Yeah. I can't relate to her anymore. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So I want to, um, share the hustle and the story about behind mm-hmm. that. Um, so when I, whenever I did first start content creating back in December, I worked a nine to five. I worked retail. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was good. Just like not good enough. I didn't feel like the excitement I feel now creating content. Yeah. So um, I stopped doing that. I went to school. I also didn't like school. It wasn't my vibe. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't her vibe. Was not my vibe. <laughs> um, so I stopped that as well. Uh-huh. And right after I stopped, actually, that's when I did start content creating. It was right after exams. Um, and that was when my first ever video did really well. And 
you know, brand deals started coming in after a couple months. And I did my first ever brand deal with L'Oreal. How Never. did that feel? It was so great. Like when you got that email, yeah, you're like you're sitting. Um, what, what was happening? I was just mind blown. I was, like, I was just like, how did you find me? Like, where is this coming from? Um, so I reached back, telling them that I would do it, and we worked through it, and it was posted, and it was just like, just posting it. I feel like posting your first ever ad sponsor is just like so nerve wracking. Um, so I posted it, and I wasn't know, wasn't really knowing what to expect. Okay, um, let's give them the beauty breakdown. Yeah. What does a like at this point? How many followers do you have? Um, when you got your first brand deal, how many followers? I think did you I have? was at 55k. Okay. Yeah. So at 55k, mm -hmm. you got L'Oreal reached out to you right, to do a yeah. paid campaign. Yes. Let's spill the tea. I people always want to know, mm -hmm. right? How much did you make on your first sponsored post ever? One thousand fifty dollars. That's insane. So crazy. Because you were working retail before. Yes, I right? was. Yeah. So how long would it have taken you to make a thousand fifty dollars? Um. Oh my gosh, months. Um, <laughs> I know, so it's many months. Crazy, oh my gosh, right? yeah. Just like the hours working retail, you're so bad. Um, so the fact that I can make one thousand fifty dollars in like minutes, just yeah. crazy. Yeah. Right. But it's brands that you love. Right. And yeah. L'Oreal has that shade range. Yes. Yeah. So it's it's brands that you already love and work with. Yeah. That's what I love about content creating. Yeah. Like, for example, me, all of my brand deals mm -hmm. from the very beginning. Search back, all the haters. Search back. Yeah. Scroll back. Scroll down. Go. Go everywhere. Yeah. You will see that every single brand deal I've ever had proudly. Yeah. Is a brand that I've already worked with. Mm -hmm. I've already talked about, and I know the product. Yes. Let's talk about something that a lot of people um, don't know about. So, when you get a brand deal, mm -hmm. you haven't tried the product yet. Right. So how the heck are you going to give it a positive review? Exactly. Um, right? Yeah. So how do you combat that? For me, mm -hmm. what I do is I say, okay, I need two weeks to a month to try out the product. Yeah. I'm able to accept the opportunity because if it's a brand like Ula Henriksen right. or Fenty yeah. or Rare Beauty or L'Oreal or Maybelline, I know I already love those products. Yeah. However, I am open to trying out a product for two weeks to a month yeah. to see if I can... Um, happily mm -hmm. speak to my followers about it yeah right yeah so that's what i like to do yeah. what do you like to do um honestly same here especially when i'm asked to like promote products such as skin tints or foundations and they're giving me their darkest shades sometimes it's not dark enough so i obviously can't promote that um so yeah just like making sure that i'm able to test out those products before giving them my honest review on them really important to me I'll tell you, that's, that's been the hardest thing for me, mm -hmm. okay? This, I, I've been doing this for 12 years. I, t I say it in every episode, like seriously. <laughs> um, so I've been doing this for 12 years. Yeah. And what I find is right when you're hot, right when you're hot fire yeah. and your content is going crazy or trending, all these opportunities will come to you. Yeah. Like, I won't even lie, like maybe I get 50 opportunities a week. Yeah. And I will only do one out of those 50. Mm -hmm. And people don't understand. Like, imagine if that's my, how much I get. Imagine the bigger content creators. Right. Yeah. Like, the elite, the biggest content creators on the platform. Yeah. They probably get thousands of requests. Uh -huh. And to pick through it, it's, it's the hardest it's thing. It's a lot. Yeah. I can only imagine. Okay. I want to ask you, what's the craziest thing a brand has ever asked you to do? Um lie that's for me um, lie do you want to talk more about that i'm kind of curious okay yeah. um ooh. <laughs> yeah. okay i'm gonna tell you the tea. i'm gonna tell you the tea this okay. is gonna break down yeah in some cases um okay i'll just tell you the straight up truth yeah um i'm like in some cases <laughs> no i'm gonna just tell you the tea. yeah oh now i'm uncomfortable <laughs> okay so I ended up signing a contract with a brand. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'm excited to try your product. Um, they were offering me a big amount of money yeah. to promote and make a product go viral. Yeah. Right? But then I try out the product, and it was not good. Like, I would feel so bad if 
a mom saved up her money yeah. to buy this product or a little boy spent his last $20 on this yeah. and I couldn't go through with it. But I signed that contract. Oh no, yeah. So what do I do in this scenario? End of the story is I ghosted them. As you should. Yeah. I just feel, I felt like it was not worth taking that big amount of money. Yeah. To promote something I didn't care about. Yeah. And that, like, it's not worth losing my followers' trust. Exactly, yeah. That's really, really important to me. Just, like, making sure I have the connection with the people that I'm creating content for. I would never want to hurt them or just, like, yeah. do anything out of the ordinary. Just, like, making videos that aren't, like, at my best. So, yeah. I make content for me. Yeah. Because it makes me happy and it gives me space. Right. It's so funny that we're, we're, it's contrasted. Yeah. Now I'm wondering, what do you do if a brand says, I want you to give me a 100% positive review? Personally, I haven't been asked to do that. Like You will. Yeah. And so what I would do, um, I honestly feel like I would ghost them. Like, I wouldn't, I can't do that. I can't lie. Now, what, what are you going to do if they offer you $25,000? It's not worth it. It will, like it's just not worth it. Yeah, I can't lie like that. Not. So let me tell you what I do. Yeah. So in that situation, say, um, let's Maybelline mm -hmm. says, I have fifty thousand dollars, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. I want you to promote something for me. I say, okay, let's do the two weeks to a month trial. Mm -hmm. I want to test out that product first. Yeah. I'm going to film. So what I do is I film my first impression. Yeah. No matter what product it is, I film a first impression. Yeah. And that's what TikTok sees. Mm -hmm. Now, if that product works throughout those two weeks and month, yeah. I am willing to post my first impression. Right. Okay? Now, if that first impression is not hot fire, what do I do? Mm -hmm. Right? And that's where we're, what the problem is. Right. However, what's the most important is the relationship that you build with the brand. Yeah. Now I can go to the brand and say, hey, um, Ula Henriksen or Tatcha. Mm -hmm. I didn't like this cream, but you know what I do like? I like your OG Milk Hydro Grip Primer or Smashbox Primer mm -hmm. or One Size Beauty Eyeliner, mm -hmm. right? I pick my favorite and I say, can we do something with that? Yeah. And most of the time they say, yes. Because it's about a relationship and a, a lot of people and content creators forget that just because you're getting paid for a partnership yeah. doesn't mean it's not a partnership, mm -hmm. right? It's all about collaborating and coming together. Yeah. A lot of people think it's one-sided and I need to make the brand happy. No, both parties should be happy in the, in the partnership. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? 100%. Yeah. Have you ever bought something that an influencer recommended that you didn't like? Yes. <laughs> Tell yeah. me about it. Um, the Dior, like um, the spray foundation. I forget the, mm, was it too light? It was, it was too light. Yeah. Um, I thought I could make it work. <laughs> I don't know. It just like, didn't work. So, mm -hmm. yeah. What do you have to say to the brands that say they're inclusive, mm -hmm. but they're not? Um, I feel like knowing the definition of, of inclusivity is really important because I know whenever they're being, whenever products are being posted on their website, they're using a lighter background. Um, but I say, why not use a darker background whenever you're taking photos of like darker toned products so that it's more accurate, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just like be a little bit more accurate with your products. And marketing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, how do you feel about when brand campaigns and beauty campaigns have one token girl that's black or with really deep skin. Yeah, I've seen that. It's, I, I feel like most of the time it's not as deep of a skin tone as um, it should be. Like, because um, there are deeper skin tone people, I feel like just having a wide range of skin tones th throughout the products is just like really important. Let's talk about a hot topic that our beauty community has been debating for years. Do you think that all beauty brands should carry 50 shades of foundation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, I believe that too, mm -hmm. because I think that me and you should be able to wear the same brand of foundation, mm -hmm. right? But then I think about what's going on in the industry. 
Like, I would not buy a foundation from Benefit. Right. I would not expect Benefit to have 50 shades of foundation Mm -hmm. because that's not what they're good at. So why would I expect them to invest all this money in creating a line that's very mediocre? Right. Like, we tore up Tarte. We tore up Benefit for not having enough shade ranges. But I don't go to Benefit to buy shade products. But I do expect Benefit to have 15 or 11 shades of brow pencils, enough to fit me and you and people beyond. Right. What do you think about that? I think that if brands do choose to come out with foundation or concealer shades, um, even if it is a small amount, why do it? Like, why are you creating 20 shades of foundation or something um, when you know that there are other brands who can create up to 60, like Rem Beauty? So. Selfishness. Right. Selfishness. Yeah. Now, that Rem Beauty launch, mm-hmm. is it actually good? Or are we just trying to compete with Rihanna and keep up with her. Oh, Rihanna launched 40, 50 shades. Mm-hmm. Now I'm going to launch 60 so I can say it's the, the best. But how long did it take to formulate that? Right. How long did, how much research went into that? Or did you just take ColourPop's formula or Maybelline's formula or another formula and just pop it into a jar? Right. And say, actually, I want 10 more shades. The shades that don't sell only actually make 5,000 of them just so that we can say that it's there. And then I'll let it expire. So does that actually add value to our community? Saying I have 60 shades, is that enough? And I like to think about brands that do it well. Mm -hmm. Like I will say, I think Makeup Forever, Estee Lauder, Maybelline, L'Oreal, they do it well. Fenty Beauty, Rare Beauty. But they do it with purpose. And they do it to fulfill our beauty community and make everyone feel included. Yeah. But brands that are doing it just to make a quick buck, I feel like I don't relate to Rem Beauty. And the reason I don't relate to Rem Beauty is she hasn't told me her beauty story. Right. I can't relate to you just because you're a star. Yeah. Just because you're a dangerous woman. Mm-hmm. I relate to people who make other people feel included especially in the beauty community and the space that we have today that should be our bottom dollar Mm -hmm. but the bottom dollar for them is i want to make 60 shades to say i have 60 shades yeah and that's that's the problem yeah that's the thing like i haven't heard much from ariana grande um just like her story behind beauty um so it's just really interesting just like seeing that she came out with 60 shades i wasn't really thinking that um, it was more of a competition. Mm-hmm. Um, I just thought that it was really nice just having someone come out with that many shades and options. Yeah, but yeah. nice is not good enough. Right. Being nice never gets anybody anywhere. Mm-hmm. And that's why I believe that Rem Beauty will not be successful in the next five years. Right. I do not believe they'll be able to grow. I do not believe that Rem Beauty will make it to Sephora. Right. I think they can stay in Ulta where they belong. Right. Because Ulta clearly wipes the shelves with people right after, I say, five years. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. It isn't a brand that I see has promise. Now, if Ariana said, you know what? I've been going through mental health. If she was more open with it yeah. and if she shared her beauty journey and how she had, to, you know what would have made more sense to me? If Ariana created a hair color line. I can see that. Or yeah. a hair growth line. Right. Because of what she had to go through on set. Mm-hmm. And she talked about her hair issues and why she wears a ponytail. Yeah. I do not relate to why Ariana created a, a makeup line. Yeah. Because we know she's been using Pat McGrath. She uses the best of the best makeup. Right. Wow, this has turned into an Ariana versus Rihanna conversation. Yeah, really quickly, yeah. But then again, you can't spell Rihanna without some Ariana. Whoa. Right? <laughs> Whoa, yeah. That's why they're tr- I think that's why she's trying to do the thing. Yeah. Is this intense? A little bit, but let's do it, yeah. It's a little intense, it's I know. It's just a little bit, yeah. But I think if these are hot topics that we need to talk about. And having yeah. somebody who looks like you with your type of beauty on my show, it's so important to highlight a question like that and a topic like that. Yeah. Because there are so many people who feel like they're in the gray space or they don't know where they fit in beauty. Mm-hmm. And having conversations like this opens up minds and um, encourages a different way of thinking. So thank you for that. Thank you, yeah. So you've already told me that you think Fenty Beauty and Rare Beauty is doing it well. Yeah. Who's not doing it? Who's not, me- who's not meeting the mark? Tell me the tea. I know Dior isn't doing that well at all. Wow. Yeah. But uh, they're doing well in lip. Yeah. I will say. Yeah. They're, that's it. 
that's, that's all I would say. Yeah. Doing well. um, okay. I know Hourglass needs to step it up a little bit more. Is our is their target demographic me and you? I wouldn't say so. So why do we Not expect me. it from them? Right? Right. But I expect this from Fenty because it's mm-hmm. including everybody. Right. Hourglass, I feel like, is for a mature woman. Mm-hmm. It's a luxury product that targets mature women. Yeah. And here, I'm a 40-year-old mom. This is the blush I use. And my 12-year-old daughter can use it as well yeah. because she has freckles yeah. and she has fair skin. Mm-hmm. So she'll love this too. Right. Right? Yeah. But there are mature 40-year-old women who look like me. So it's like, why can't they shop at Hourglass, you know? Because it's not made for us. Right. Fenty is made for us. Right. Rare Beauty is made for us. Maybelline, L'Oreal, it's made for us. Right. And as fair or like as unfair as that is, I feel like it's important to just focus on brands who do care. And to that's ha- why they're hot fire. Yeah. And that's why they deserve the crown. Yeah. That's why they deserve the number one and number two spot at Sephora. Yeah. And in our beauty space. Mm-hmm. So shout out to Rare Beauty, yeah. Fenty Beauty, L'Oreal, Maybelline. You're doing the damn thing. We love you. Yeah. We support you. And we can't wait for more. Yes. Dior, Hourglass. Now you know why. Yeah. <laughs> Now, thinking about your journey, Mm -hmm. what are you excited for? So much more growth and just... It's going to happen. Yeah. um, Meeting new faces. It's already starting, like, walking around, like, my hometown. Just, like, people noticing me. It's so cool. And I inspire them. They tell me that's my face. And it makes me want to cry. So it's just, like, really, really cool. Um, Just, like, I really do want to start looking into building my own makeup brand at some point in the future. So... Is that a dream? I think it's a My standard dream. My biggest dream, yeah. What would you, would you have 50 shades? I would have a ton of shades. 60 like Ariana? Yeah, but I would have meaning behind it. Per. Per. Exactly. Yeah. There's, there should be a reason. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's, that's what's important in beauty. Yeah. There has to be a reason. You can't just do it to get money. Yeah. You can't do it for the clout. You can't do it for the fame because it doesn't, read through yeah are you ready to de-glam let's de-glam so now it's my favorite part of the show where we can get vulnerable and it's the true beauty breakdown all right. get glam with no actually don't get glam with me get de with <laughs> all me. right let's do let's it let's remove our glam and talk about real shit yeah you know what i now i know i for sure will not ever get a deal with Hourglass or yeah. Dior, and I am okay with that. Mm-hmm. But damn, their lipsticks are good. You see, that's the thing. It's, <laughs> hard. it's so hard to like support a brand when like some of their products are so good, but then they're so bad at like other things. It's just like I and don't like know. you know what? If I talk about a brand that our social media doesn't like, mm-hmm. that's the worst. Yeah, but I like. For example, Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics. Yeah, people cannot get over that moldy lipstick situation Mm -hmm. fine i get it okay it (laughs) happened right but now i love the formula yeah i love the formula she has come up with and i think there's so much power and bravery in creating and recreating Mm -hmm. like how powerful is it that she failed yeah miserably yeah but still chose to reformulate do it again. Yeah, and she acknowledged it too. Yeah, yeah. and she does not get credit for it. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know the Jaclyn Hill backstory. I just judge the makeup, honey. I don't know what the heck went on over there. But the makeup's good. And I think there's always second chances. Yeah. Like, if I ever talk about a Jaclyn Hill product, Mm -hmm. people are like, wow, you support Jaclyn Hill? No, I support my under eyes being very bright. Yeah. But then we also need to be considerate of um, the accountability we hold creators to mm-hmm. and that people who offend our community. Yeah. Which it's, it's a really tough line and it's, it's hard. Yeah. What's your favorite makeup remover? Garnier. That's all I use. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it the best? You want a little bit? I'd rather you do it in the I house. Think I think I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. It's like wipes. I heard wipes are bad for you. I don't know. Okay. I still I, use them anyway. I am very aware of this. Yeah. See, I get canceled all the time for using wipes, but yeah. there's nothing like a Neutrogena makeup remover for me. Yeah, and they're so handy. They're just so much quicker than like, Garnier. I love a makeup wipe mm-hmm. 
and then I put micellar water in my makeup wipe. I've done that. Game changer. Yeah. But also, I'm a makeup artist, so during the panini, yeah. I had so many makeup removers. Mm -hmm. Like, I had so much wipes, yeah. I had to use them all. Mm -hmm. Or else they expire. Right. Well, I mean, they I dry still up. Use, they dry I, up. Oh, yeah. I mean, I still use expired makeup. <gasps> you use expired makeup? I That's do. illegal. Yeah, I know. I'm That's sorry. That's illegal. I mean, sue me, you know? <laughs> yeah. You're, you can go to makeup jail for that. I hope so, I do. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, what would your mug shock be? So you'd probably be wearing the expired makeup, actually. I know, I think that's what I'm doing now. Yeah, that's what <laughs> okay, I Okay, so tell me, tell me the tea, what's the expired makeup that you use? Um, I'll no. tell you mine. Okay, yeah, let's do first. Eyeshadows. Oh yeah, I mean. I will use a subculture eyeshadow, a modern renaissance eyeshadow. Yeah. A Mario, Kim K mm -hmm. eyeshadow. I currently still use my <laughs> hold on let's, this there's a message to kim kardashian and kim kardashian only we expected you to come out with kkw kk beauty mm -hmm. drop the w honey we respect it oh all right yeah i was expecting her to reformulate everything mm -hmm. but then she do she released skin honey i wanted my lip liner <laughs> i wanted my under eye setting powder yeah I was ready for a new and improved contour stick. Yeah, you see, and also for the price you pay for makeup, I feel like after the expiration date, I'm just like, I'm still gonna use it. Like $120 for a palette, like I'm not gonna mm -hmm. wait six months. And Doesn't matter if you make a thousand bucks a post. Yeah, no, Right. Yeah. So what is it? What's your what's your product that you? Um, a lot of foundations. Um, That's actually illegal. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, what, but um, it's because you can't find the shades. Right. It's not easy to yeah. use. Um, okay, that makes sense, that's sad. I do have a couple Rare Beauty products from years ago. Rare um, Beauty products? Yeah. From years ago? Yeah. They just launched Or like two years Fenty, ago. sorry, okay. Fenty, yeah. That's a five. Oh my gosh, Fenty, Fenty. yeah. Um, and also the first time Rare Beauty came out with their foundation, um, I've had that for way too long and I still use it, so. Hmm. All right, so I know we both grew up in Canada. Yeah. I just want to know what your experience like growing up and just like how you came to who you are right now. It's a good story. Um, so I've been, for the fifth time, <laughs> I've been doing this for 12 years. <laughs> it's because I can't believe I've been doing this for 12 years. Yeah. I never thought this would be my full career. Mm -hmm. But I also always knew it would be my full-time career. Yeah. And, and, and now that it's here, I'm just like, oh, very grateful for it. Yeah. Because every time I say, it's been 12 years. Yeah. I think about how long it took me to get here. Mm -hmm. Because I, was al I always saw that beauty creators just popped off. Yeah. Some people are just t are able to blow up like you. Mm -hmm. But mine was a slow burn. Mm -hmm. It took me years to get to where I am. And I feel like I'm not there yet. But I actually went to police school. Oh, so yeah, yeah, people don't know that about me. I went to police school and um, the first day of school, you know what this bitch at school said to me? What'd she say? This is not fashion class. I hope you walked right out. No, because honey, I bring the fashion wherever I am. Okay, slay. So I slayed the yeah. front row. I sat in the front row of every police school As class. You and I had a beautiful, juicy couture pink backpack. I love that. I would have hot pink lipstick mm -hmm. on. I would like literally Mac candy yum yum. I would wear that. Yeah. And this girl hated me and bullied me every day in college. Mm -hmm. Like I thought bullying stopped mm -hmm. at high school. Right. It gets worse because adults are assholes. Yeah. Like bullying never stops. Like. I've been bullied all my life. Mm -hmm. How about you? Have you been bullied? I have been bullied. Yeah. What'd they bully about? Just my skin tone, you know? It's just like growing up dark skin. You kind of expect it. So it's, I, I don't want to say it didn't bother me, but like you just, it's so, you just get so used to it. Like, yeah. yeah. And did your parents or um, people that you love kind of prepare you for that? I never talked about it with my parents because I was so embarrassed. Um, I know they would talk about it, like what they go through, because um, my my mom's a nurse, so she would work with like older people, and they would sometimes just say rude remarks about her, and she would come home and tell us about it. It would make me sad, but I don't know, just like me telling her like what I would go through, I just it's not like I don't want to say it's embarrassing, but it's just like hard. So. Because yeah. your mom's been through enough. Yeah. And to exactly. feel that weight that your daughter is going through it too. Yeah. So we can only hope for our beauty to be considered beautiful. Yeah. 
And only when we do that is when we're able to break beauty mm -hmm. standards and beauty norms and create our own. Yeah. So that our kids don't have to do this. So what you're doing right now is so important mm -hmm. to create a space where people who look like you and don't belong. Yeah. Right? And so that the our the future generation doesn't have to go through this, mm -hmm. whether it's fifty or sixty foundation shades. Yeah. Hopefully, we're all just considered beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot to go through in the beauty space and a lot to learn still, and we have a lot to evolve. Mm -hmm. um, but you're a part of it, mm -hmm. and that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Now that we're chilling, I'm ready to start Beauty Pop Quiz. All right, ready? let's do it. So it's rapid <laughs> hot fire. You have one minute to answer. The first thing that comes to your mind is usually the right answer. Are you ready? Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Welcome to Beauty Pop Quiz. Okay. What's your vice? Can we come back to that one? I'm like, my yes. mind's going blank already. Wow, this is not. It's kind of intense. Cute. I know. Okay. I know. <laughs> Two. Favorite skincare brand? Cetaphil. Who is your favorite celebrity? Steve Harvey, right? <laughs> um, Selena Gomez. Okay. Yeah. Who is your celebrity doppelganger? I've been told Naomi Campbell. You better work, bitch. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty pleasure. Chewing ice. I do that a lot. Naomi okay. looks like a nice chewer, for yeah. sure. <laughs> City or tropical vacation? City. Okay, sneakers or pumps? Sneakers. Celebrity crush? Jack Harlow. Naomi would totally like Jack Harlow. She better not. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's such a Naomi thing to say. Oh. Favorite childhood movie? Beauty and the Beast. I think. Yeah. Taylor Soul this time. I don't know that song. So was it oh really God. your favorite then? No, I think just the, the first thing that came to my mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. The beauty community is Savage. And this whole sponsorship is by Savage X Fenty. No, I'm <laughs> Can you imagine? imagine? Oh my god. No. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being on my show, thank Naomi you. Campbell. Oh my God, Junior! <laughs> Where can everybody find you? Um, TikTok, Nadel Kabashi with two eyes, um, and Instagram also Nadel Kabashi. And We're gonna yeah. link it below. Yes. Thank you so much for being on my show. I'm so glad we talked about, you know, your story and mm -hmm. shade ranges and everything in between. So mm -hmm. that's what it's like, and that's how you become a beauty content creator. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of The Beauty Breakdown. Make sure to subscribe to Past Your Bedtime on YouTube for the video version of this show. And you can literally listen to it on all streaming platforms. Remember to stay fierce and be unapologetically you.